How's it going, everyone? And welcome back if you're familiar with us. If you aren't, hello to you too. I'm Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and today we'll be unboxing and reviewing Director Krennic from Rogue One by Hot Toys. Beginning with the cigar band wrapped around the front lid of the shoebox style packaging, we have Director Krennic's name and his photo. Found on either side of the cigar band, you'll see Krennic facing the front of the packaging, almost in a coin style side portrait. As for the back, we have the warning, store locations, and legal information. Before diving in, Krennic is front and center, resting just above the embossed Star Wars logo and a character pose seen in Rogue One. Upon opening the box, we're met with an art insert featuring Krennic and a few of his Death Trooper bodyguards. As always, if you're enjoying what you see so far, don't forget to like and subscribe for future content. Let's go ahead and continue. To begin, Krennic comes with a left gesture indicative of thought. This can be used in conjunction with a few other hands as we continue. For me, I'd stick with it as seen here. Next, we have a left open palm gesture. A lot of these hands limit us to crossing his arms while posing. We also have a right gesturing hand that can be used to hold the ammo, simply gesturing or crossing in front of him with another gesture we'll discuss momentarily. Another right gesture included, best used for his imperial hat. I couldn't find another use for it, unless I crossed his arms. Lastly, for the right hand we have one fist. Again, there's a lot of promotion here for crossing his arms. This also leads us into the primary left resting gesture, which I find easy to lend between a lot of the hands included. Another left gesture, being the trigger finger, can also hold the cold cylinders. But it is a trigger finger, and it is meant to hold the DT-29 heavy blaster pistol, as seen in the film. In typical Hot Toys fashion, the detail work is incredible, and they did a great job with the paint application. Unlike some of the recent accessories created by Hot Toys, there aren't any removable parts, and that includes the scope. As far as holstering the weapon, it simply slides right into the molded plastic holster. There are three ammo cartridges that can be found in the packaging. These can be installed on the belt, although I'd suggest being careful. It isn't the best process. As for the cold cylinders, they're meant to insert in his pockets. Here's a simplified edit to how it's done and where it's meant to go. As for the process, I used a plastic flattened tip to open the pocket. From there, I slid the cold cylinder in so that I don't mess up the shirt and make it ratty over time. And finally, I placed the magnetic cape back on the figure. It's on him right out of the box, but I didn't want to dirty it up. If posing the cape is in your interest, wiring only exists on the bottom lining. As for the cape's overall design, it's beautiful. It's got a soft windbreaker feel to it, and the tailoring is pretty solid. I like it, but I'm a little more interested in the next one we're about to discuss. But first, let's prep the figure. We'll begin with taking out the rank badge installed on his shirt. It's tough at first, but it does come out. Next, we'll need to take off the cape. Both cold cylinders. The belt, which is held together by Velcro. And the portrait. Now to install the poncho. I couldn't help myself, so <laughs> I started futzing with it right away. But let's not watch that process and continue. Before the futzing begin, we'll need to reapply the belt. Now we can add the cold cylinders on the right side of the poncho. The current rank badge is fine, but I like the one from before. Similar to the badge seen on his shirt, the paint application is the same and can swap out. The process is the same, it's just a thinner badge. 
Now that we're done, we can apply the one from earlier. Here's where the futzing began, because the poncho isn't wired and it's kind of haphazard. At this point, it's making it look as good as possible around the pose you choose for your display. And lastly, we have the base. The tinfoil nameplate includes the Imperial Cog in a Rogue One style format. There's also a tiny diorama piece to bring the base to life. On top, we have Orson Krennic's name written in textured orbesh just below his portrait. And off to the right, we have a Death Trooper in a textured Imperial Cog wheel as well. Altogether, you get a feel for the texture print off of the glossy sticker which is pre-installed on the base. I like it, but I would have preferred having the option to stick it on myself. The base comes with a crotch holder, which is relatively easy to install. There's nothing out of the ordinary, and it isn't a special design as seen with K2SO. And now that we have our pose set and a few death troopers at the ready, we can plot our course for Edu. As if the tailoring for the suit wasn't enough to win us over, Ben Mendelssohn's likeness for director Krennic is undeniable. Under any form of lighting, the portrait can't be mistaken for anyone else. As we begin the 360 segment, we have all the details shown throughout the portrait and the hair design. With this release, he comes with a swap out headpiece that may or may not seem obvious. To me, unless I'm looking for it on purpose, the seam line doesn't break my attention to the figure. It's dependent on the angle more often than not though. More on that shortly. For now, the portrait design is phenomenal, especially under low light conditions. As for swapping out the hair, it's simple. Lift the hair from the scalp and you're done. It's held by a magnet which is very strong and doesn't feel cheaply put together. Like the hair, simply do the reverse. Place the hat onto the head and you have a seamless appearance to Krennic in his imperial hat. This is more my preferred approach since Krennic did feel a bit more intimidating whenever he donned the poncho hat ensemble. Note the way the hat rests on his hair where the seam line would be for the other piece. It's incredible what Hot Toys can do when they decide to go full steam ahead for a character they like. It looks like a miniature person straight from the movie, at least to me. Let us know down below which version of Krennic you prefer most, with his hair or with the Imperial hat. With control lighting, now we get to see everything Viva Lai put into his work. As always, he doesn't disappoint. What could have made it better? Obviously, now we have the Sir system, but even then, you can't deny the talent seen here. This is director Krennic. You couldn't go wrong either way choosing the hair or hat piece. Because both versions look really good. I will not fail. We wanted to try something new this time around with articulation, so let us know what you all think down below. Before we begin with that, let's talk about the overall tailoring. The suit design is incredible. It's sleek, fitting, and tailored very well to Krennic's body, even down to the stitching pattern on the back. As mentioned earlier, the holster is a molded plastic, but the belt and ammo carriers are pleather. That doesn't take away from its design, though. While I'm not a fan of the military-style jodhpur's design, they came out very nice. I'd have preferred more of a sleek, straight pant leg, but it's Star Wars. The boots are very similar to what we've seen with Count Dooku, Han Solo, and the upcoming Mandalorian Luke, to name a few. So, they're pleather. <laughs> Now for articulation, Krennic doesn't disappoint. We have a double bend in the elbows, a swivel at the bicep, and a butterfly joint in the shoulder. 
The portrait can barely look down, unfortunately. But he can look up for companion pieces such as Vader. For the legs, we have a double bend in the knees on soft ratchet joints. There's also a cut at the thigh to allow for a swivel. In terms of his midsection, we have some give, but this is due to the bodysuit. As far as leaning back, it's about the same range of motion. Lastly, we have the wingspan, which the body's overall design is very surprising. I'd love for this kind of attention to the body to be standard, especially considering he's just an Imperial officer with so much posability. To start, we have Moff Gideon. If you're looking to create an Imperial display, they both look great together. Next, we have Darth Vader, who tower over him quite a bit. Not as much as the KX security droid, though, or K2SO, if that's what he represents in your collection. He's definitely the tallest Star Wars figure, at least in mine. And lastly, we have the Death Trooper, as seen in The Mandalorian. All in all, Krennic's an awesome figure, but I couldn't see myself paying over $500 for him. While I'm not a fan of the hand selection, I was very surprised at his articulation. He's an officer, so I didn't expect it. Not to mention, Hot Toys pulled all the stops for Ben Mendelsohn's likeness. It's scary good. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and give this figure an 8 out of 10. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. As always, it doesn't matter what we rate the figure. If you like it, we love it. And if we don't catch you on the flippity flop, you, on the other hand, die with the rebellion.